Welcome back to another GCN Tech Clinic. Now, if you're not familiar with how the Tech Clinic works, you simply comment your questions in the comment section underneath previous Tech Clinics. We pick them out and answer them as best as we can. So without Using further ado... Using the hashtag. Oh, yeah. Well, to be fair, I don't always use the hashtag Do to pick not? them out. No, oh, try using the hashtag mm. as GCN Tech. Right, first question is from Carlos Parada, who says, Hello, tech team. I'd like to know what are the advantages of having an oval chainring instead of a classic one? Thanks. Well, that's all that springs to mind when I think of oval chain rings is Chris Froome. Yeah. He, he swore by them, didn't he? He always used to use them. But I think I've never used an oval chain ring, but the theory of them is to minimise the dead spot in yeah, the pedal Yeah, in, in your pedaling. So when your pedals are at the bottom of the pedal stroke and at the top, they sort of lose a little bit of their momentum. So by using the oval chain ring, it's effectively helping to almost like kick the cranks around. That's the theory behind it. And as you Have say, you used one? no, no, as you say, it worked for Chris Froome. He swore by him. He won do... the Tour de France, so yeah. <laughs> it worked for him. And then maybe that's why we went wrong because we didn't use oval chain rings. Um, yeah. Maybe that's why we didn't win many bike races. Yeah, I mean, lots of riders have used them, but they don't seem to be as popular as just normal round chain no. rings. So. And I think if you were making the switch to them, it'd take a while to get used to and you'd have to give it time as it yeah. might feel a bit rubbish when you first start using it. But after some time, it might feel good. And if you do go to them, then I would recommend having them on, if you've got more than one bike, having them on all the bikes, so then yeah. you're not switching between between two. Could be a potentially quite a uh, reasonable investment, couldn't it? It could be, mm. yeah. Okay, right, fair enough. Right, on to our next question, which is from Mark Baker, who says, hi, man on Alex and slash or Ollie. <laughs> a lot of pedals come with different length spindle options. So they've given some examples of Shimano and Speedplay. Is there any way of determining the correct spindle length without having to have a bike fit? Thank you and love the show. I've never really thought too much about spindle length when buying okay. pedals. Um, I just usually get the standard length and then I guess the different length is to determine how far away your foot is going to be from the, the crank. Yeah, the crank. Yeah, no, that's right. So um, the different width um, of spindles will adjust how far out your feet are from, so your stance, for example. But you do have a level of adjustability built into the cleats so you can move your foot further out from the crank or you can move it further in. And the reason for that is as a general rule of thumb, when looking head on at your pedaling technique, you wanna have your foot in line with your knee. It's kind of like the most ergonomic position. Now, if the movement and adjustability in the cleat and the shoe doesn't allow you to do that, that's when you might need to consider that different length axle or spindle on your pedals. Now, not all of them have different options, it tends to be the slightly more expensive version of the pedals which allow you to choose. But my advice would be, I think, like you were saying, most people won't need to worry about it. Probably 95% of people will be perfectly fine with the normal ones. But if you're unsure, head to get a bike fit, I think is the best option. Mm. Yeah, get someone to assess your riding position. Next up is, oh, we can't read this username out. We can't read this username out, but we'll we'll read the question out. Yeah, you out. read the question yeah. out, go on. Hello, GCN crew. Um, would like to know what's up with what's up with the hookless rim max pressure limit. Will the tyre actually blow off if exceeded this pressure? Perhaps you can do a video on it. Try and pump them up beyond their max pressure and see if they'll blow out. This sounds like a, a video <laughs> that has your name written all right, over it, so Alex. The maximum pressure is what is deemed safe by the ETRTO. I think I've got those initials right. And what does that? The European Tyre and Rim Technical Organisation. Didn't even know that was a thing. I might have got it a bit jumbled up in the order, but it's basically an organisation designed to make sure tyres and rims meet a real precise standard, and as such, they've tested all the different pressures, and they have deemed that that's the safest and most suitable maximum working pressure. Mm. And if you do go over that, then yeah, I have heard stories of the tyres, like when you pump them up really hard, like popping off and blowing off the rim, which you definitely don't want. But for um, an experiment, it could be quite cool just to... Yeah. I guess as an experiment, I don't, I don't want to be seen to endorsing going no. above the maximum pressure, no. but rest assured, if I can get the health and safety department at GCN Megabase to give it the okay, yeah, we'll have a look, we'll see, give it a go. see what happens, yeah. Yeah. why not? So next question is in from Chris. Hi, Ollie, Alex and Manon. I need some help with making a very important decision. Yeah. Which would be the best purchase? One, a power meter for my bike. I cur Currently, I do all my workouts on heart rate. Or two, a set of carbon wheels. 
Ooh. Oh, that is a tough one. Yeah. Personally, I would definitely go for a power meter. I think that would be the most beneficial. Yeah. Give you a great insight into your training, give you structure. And once you start riding with a power meter, you'd, you'd never go back. Don't get me wrong, a, car, a carbon set of wheels is a great upgrade. But personally, I would go power meter. I'd go the complete opposite. Get those carbon bad boys straight into your bike ASAP. What? Yeah, yeah carbon, really? wheels, carbon wheels look sick. Yeah, they do look sick, but if they are nice fancy carbon wheels, you don't want to use them every day. You mm. just save them for... Right. Yeah, they are going to help, but okay. I feel like a power meter is more beneficial in the run long run. Potentially. Power wheels can come later. My train of thought. Already, obviously, doing a reasonable level of training, using heart rate to monitor that. Not the most precise way, but pretty acceptable. You can get some really good results from that. Secondly, I think carbon wheels in any situation are going to not only make your bike look sick, as I said, but will make you faster. Ride uphill, nine times out of ten, carbon wheels are lighter. Ride on a the flat, they're more aerodynamic. Well, we can agree to disagree, it's all right. I'm gonna go, I'm sticking to my power meter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, especially if you love the stats and... Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I'd really want to Ollie have both. would say power meter. Yeah, actually, you probably would. Mm. Okay, right. Yeah, well, I'd really like to know what you actually go for, so please let us know down that comment section. Yeah, let us know when you order your carbon wheels. <laughs> uh, next question is from Paul Colling Ridge, who says, at 63 years old, I've suddenly got more freedom to cycle, but my neck and shoulders are complaining about my riding position. I've inverted my handlebar stem, um, which has helped out. But what else could you suggest for longer, brackets not faster, rides for the older almost or more compromised rider? Says he's not keen on flat bars. Mm. No, mm. I don't think flat bars would necessarily be an option. But if you've already looked into changing your position on the bike, you might want to look at doing things off the bike that people often ignore. So things like mobility, stretching or strength work can be really beneficial. And all the pro athletes at top level will do that because it is a lot of work and how you feel on the bike is done off the bike. So all these stretching it all helps, stuff. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Like to get even things to get you into more of an aerodynamic position, you do work off the bike as well. So I def definitely recommend doing things like that. You could do yoga sessions. We actually have some over on the GCN training channel where we did an upper body yoga session because you know everybody gets sore backs and necks on the on the bike as well. So things like that, things off the bike, I would look at. I think that's really helpful information because it is very easy to overlook that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I overlook it. Exactly. Yeah. We're all yeah. we're all guilty of it. We'll just yeah. focus on the bike, focus on riding, and then you forget about the conditioning and even the like a short stuff. little routine, like five or ten minutes every now and yeah. again. It's going to help. Even quite a just bit. doing ten minutes before yeah. you get on the bike, it might help. Hmm. So there you go. Yeah. Thanks. Um, last question for this week is from Michael Sasha. They say hi all. I have a Wahoo kicker bike and love it. However, I've never been able to get comfortable on it. I don't actually own an outdoor bike. That's interesting. I've never heard of someone owning an indoor um, smart bike only and not really? an outdoor bike. Yeah. Um, do you know if there are any specialized fitters for smart bikes or would I just have to get a bike fit for an outdoor bike, which I don't have, <laughs> and then put those measurements onto the Wahoo bike? Yeah, well, in theory, well, not in theory, in, in reality, the, the measurements of an indoor bike compared to how you would set up an outdoor bike should be exactly the yeah, same. They so you should just mimic that exact setup. But seeing as you don't have an outdoor bike as a starting point and you're struggling to get comfy, I think you're going to have to see someone who is specialist in that area, so a bike fitter. Yeah, we do actually have over on the GCN channel um, a video on how to fit your bike. So if you have just got the bike and you've just kind of guess things you might want to watch that video first and set things up properly and then if that doesn't work go and see professional help but I do indoor training if you are on the indoor bike for long periods of time it can be a little bit more uncomfortable than if you're on an outdoor bike just because you aren't moving your body as much you wouldn't even notice you'd you know stand up out the saddle or you move your body to go around corners things like that so because you are just kind of stuck it is a little bit less comfortable but it shouldn't and you won't comfortable. need um, you won't need an outdoor bike to get a bike fit because no. there are lots of bike fitters which use effectively a jig which adjusts in a similar to, similar way to how the Wahoo bike adjusts. They can fit different width handlebars. You can little, little windy wheels to move the bars and the saddle around, and 
Yeah, so you can turn up and they'll be able to give you the measurements that you can take away and then set your bike up. Yeah. Mm, perfect. That was our last question for this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this week's tech clinic. And if you have, give it a thumbs up, share the video far and wide. And if we didn't get to your question, sorry about that, but comment it in the comment section down below. And if you have any more questions, leave them down there and we'll answer them next week. Mm, right, see you later. Bye.